Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Progressive Community Church International. Uh, just want to thank you for joining us on this morning. Uh, you know, when we meet, it's just such a pleasure to be in God's house. And so we always start off with praise and thanks to God for what he has been doing in our lives. Uh, if you're out there in Mediaville, I'm going to ask you that it's first Sunday, so we want to, you to join us later on in the service for communion. So get you some crackers and some juice ready for when we do our communion service, the Lord's Supper. And then I also want you to get you a notebook, a pen, uh, or whatever you use. If you got a phone like I do, you got a pen with it so you can take some notes. Because I'm going to tell you when the word of God comes forth in the house of God, it sounds good, but sometimes later on that day, you don't remember exactly what was said. But when you hear it, and when you write it down, believe me, you will remember, and it will stick with you like glue. So just remember to get you a piece of paper, a note or something. Get out your Bible because a, a magnificent, strong, powerful word of God will be heard today. I, I, I know I'm, and for those of you who do not know me, my name is Servant Pastor Brenda Birch. Hallelujah. That's my name. That's who I am here. He says I'm a servant and a pastor. So I just thank God for clarifying where I am, and if you ask him, he will clarify where you are too, what your anointing is in your life. And with that said, I just want to say, you know, every time we meet, it's just a pleasure, it's just a joy. We're asking, you notice that Pastor Curtis is not here this morning, but that's okay. He's on a mission. He's on a traveling mission, so we're going to praise travel in mercy and grace and favor on his going there and returning. Hallelujah. God's got him on a powerful mission. All you gotta do is look around us and see the mission that God has placed on this house and on this man of God. And so that's why I give God praise. That's why I give him thanks. That's why I'm grateful that he's the redeemer who gives redemption. He's the Lord I'm 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
praise is going up this morning. You can be seated. God, I put it on my heart that a lot of you are struggling. You're struggling with relationships. And, and you don't understand why. But he wants me to tell you that, you know, if you go to that parable, it talks about the different grounds that people are in. That some are in good ground and some are in hard ground and some are in rocky ground. But we don't have, we can deal with those that are hard because we know where they come from. And we can deal with those that are good because we know where they're coming from. The rocky ones, we, we have a tendency to try to polish the rock. Or we try to pound the rock. But you can't pulverize the rock. So we have a hard time with people that are rocky. But the ones we have the most trouble with are the thorn bush. Because the thorn bush produces a fruit. It has a flower. It can bloom. It has some goodness in it. And the leaves of it are lush. It, 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 it's, it's, it's full of leaves that looks like it's vibrant. But the thing that it is, is it's stuck in its own self-centeredness. When it thinks it's right, it's right, but it's not right. What they do is they think right is wrong and wrong is right. And you can't change how they think. And it's not your job. You try to change something. You try to beat something with a, a, a thorn bush. And if you beat a thorn bush down, the root is still there. So for a thorn bush, what happens is they, in public, they bloom. They have a way of showing out and showing their goodness when they want to. But when they're at home, close with those who love them, they let the guard down. And then the thorns come out. When you try to help them, they push the thorn, push the thorns out. And they prick you and they hurt you when you back off. Now, I, I, the reason I brought this is because I was studying back here in Exodus. And God said that, in this word, it says that when he was talking to the Israelites, he said that there were Hittites and Hivites and Canaanites among you. Those thorn bushes are like the Hivites and the Canaanites and the Hittites. See, they look like us. Sometimes they walk like us. Sometimes they act like us, but they're not us. And God said that he, in essence, he's the one that's got to come. In other words, it's going to take God's word, his sharpness of his word, to change a thorn bush. You've been trying to do it, but you can't do it. All you got to do is pray for him. Intercede for him. That's all you can do. You can try to hit him. You can try to do all this. You can pull him up in the ground. Like there's a rock beating him with a rock. But it ain't going to work. They ain't going to change. It's only going to take God's word. I don't know who needs to hear that. But I know that we can be saved. Now, I do want you to know, uh, I do have a few announcements this morning. We will be doing another grief share. Hallelujah, on April the 12th. Now, if you have a, 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 a cell phone, you can, in, in, in church, it'll tell you to go to your cell phone. But I'm going to tell you, go to your cell phone and type in griefshare.org. Type in griefshare.org. And you will come up with a website called Griefshare. And it should say, find a group near you, near me. If you put in 46402, you will find Progressive Community Church International. We will be having a you can you can you can register online. Register online and we'll know how many people 
people will be coming out. You see, a lot in this season, a lot of people have been dealing with grief as well. We've lost a lot of loved ones during this pandemic. A lot of people have been hurt, and we don't know how to deal with the hurt. That's because you, I'm going to tell you, my brother passed in December in, in Louisiana. And because we're not there, we still haven't got a death certificate. So you see, the government is slow. Things are going up. Now going slow, and it's hard to get through the bereavement process when you're still trying to get paperwork in order and somebody died three months ago. So we need this time of grief share. It's biblically oriented. You journal, you read, and, it's a, it, and it, everything is kept private. None of your business is going out in the street. So I just want to thank you. Uh, our own Letitia Johnson will be one of the facilitators. And Elton Dawson will be a facilitator of this. But I'm going to tell you, it's very powerful. And now, also, you know, we're in the month, we're feasting in the word. Hallelujah. And our feast of, in the word for this week is Philippians 4 and 12. Philippians 4 and 12. So write that down. Amen. And now I want to just, I'm going to just, let, I'm going to put this mic down. Because I know we got a powerful word from our own minister, Kevin Kyle, this morning. Amen. So let's give Minister Kyle a hand to join us to give us a strong word from this man of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house one more time? And if you're happy to be in the house, why don't you show God some love? Amen. God is good. Amen. 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 I promise I won't be before you long. Amen. For those who can, we're going to get right into this. And ask, um, open up your Bibles. I'm going to be in two places today. Do me a favor, when you open up your Bible, put a bookmark in the 69th Psalm. 69th Psalm, put a bookmark there. Because we're going to read one verse there. say I got it? Yeah. Amen. And then turn with me to the book of John, the gospel, according to John 19 chapter. And for those who can, please stand. John 19. Amen. Amen. We're going to be reading on this morning verses 28 to 30. John 19. Amen. You need more time to say, hold up. Okay. Amen. 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 Scripture reads, verse 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar, and put it upon his hop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. Amen. Then turning to Psalm 69, Amen. We're just going to read the 21st verse. Psalm 69, the 21st verse. And that reads, They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Amen. Most gracious God, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, for this opportunity, Lord, to stand before your people, Lord. And I pray now that you move me out of the way so that they see none of me but all of thee, O Lord. And we pray that you would 
help this word to fall on hearing ears and understanding hearts this morning, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that this that this meat, hallelujah, be nourishment for our minds, bodies, and souls, and spirits, Lord God. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather again in your home as a church family. And all the people said, amen. 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 You may have your seats. Amen. Amen. So for the last four weeks, we've been exploring what is often referred to as Jesus' seven last words on the cross. In week one, we explored Jesus saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. We learned about the power of forgiveness as Jesus interceded through prayer on behalf of those who persecuted and mocked him and the power of releasing or letting go of the pain that can consume us in our lives and the pain and the bitterness of our past and the pain and the bitterness of those, hallelujah, who, who, who may have done wrong in our lives. Amen. Then on the second week, we explored the question is there a heaven for a G? That's when Jesus spoke to the criminal beside him on the cross and declared, today you will be in paradise with me. Jesus in that, in that saying was ultimately making a reservation for that criminal in heaven. And, and this was because of his willingness to repent. Jesus Jesus was willing to forgive this man, hallelujah, and offered him, hallelujah, a, a, an invitation, hallelujah, into heaven. And we learned that, hallelujah, if we ourselves repent, Jesus too will forgive our sins and he will reserve a place for us in paradise. And, and the truth is we've all sinned and Miss the mark and we all need like that criminal on the cross we all need to ask Jesus to remember us in heaven hallelujah and so ultimately we did learn that there is a place for heaven in heaven for a G and that G is a guilty person hallelujah and and the truth is we're all G's in God's eyes because Hallelujah. We've all fallen short and we've all missed the mark. Hallelujah. But because God shows us so much mercy, hallelujah, we will have the opportunity to see paradise. Amen. Amen. And then in the third week, in the third week, Pastor Birch, hallelujah, she helped us to explore the concept of relationships when Jesus spoke from the cross. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And from that moment, he took her into his house. Hallelujah. And she, she taught us that, that, that we ought to be able to call somebody our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, regardless of bloodline, because at the cross, hallelujah, that is where relationships, hallelujah, can change. Hallelujah. But, 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 but when we have God in the picture with his command to love one another, adding godly love to a relationship, hallelujah, all to bring about a positive change, hallelujah, amen. And then on last week, last week, Pastor Curtis explored the concept of rejection, hallelujah, and how to turn a negative into a positive hallelujah and and, and 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 when jesus said my god my god why hast thou forsaken me and we learned that hallelujah rejection runs deep in this country but by the grace of god hallelujah god is holy and pure and is sitting on his throne and is still in control and god won't reject us because of who 
or what we are. Hallelujah. And so on today, hallelujah, I'd like for us to explore, hallelujah, uh, when Jesus said on the cross, I thirst, hallelujah. And so for just a little while, I'd like to meditate on the subject of a thirst for truth. And and then if, if I could put a hashtag on that, as the young folks say, a, 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 a sub-label, I, I, I call it turning bitter wine into sweet victory. Hallelujah. Turning bitter wine into sweet victory. My, my brothers and my sisters, as I initially looked at this verse, which I had read before, and, 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 and I never really understood, hallelujah, how uh, or, or why Jesus could thirst. I, I, I was wondering, was this some, some, some type of a, a metaphor? Uh, and, and Jesus saying, um, I thirst. Was he trying to teach us something? Was this, did this have some deep, deep meaning? Hallelujah. And, and, and then after careful studying, after chewing on the word, hallelujah, I've come to the conclusion that Jesus said, I thirst. Because he was just thirsty, amen. And and, and and he had a need to fulfill God's word of truth and in order to fulfill his destiny, in order to fulfill the truth as prophesied, hallelujah, in the, in the scriptures, hallelujah, and, and to confirm ultimately the authenticity of God's holy words. In other words, Jesus had a thirst for the truth. So, uh, to look at this, I, I, I want us to, to look at three things, hallelujah, that, 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 that Jesus saying, I thirst, reveals to us about Jesus. Say your name for three things. Amen, amen. And so, amen. First, I want to look at Jesus suffered physically as a man. Secondly, that Jesus fulfilled scripture on the cross. And third, hallelujah, that, that even though mankind did not adequately address Jesus' thirst in his time of despair, by the grace of God, hallelujah, Jesus still provides for us in our own times of need. Amen, amen. And so, let's begin by considering the thought that Jesus suffered physically, hallelujah, besides his time on the cross, saints, the Bible records, the Bible records that Jesus humbled himself and suffered greatly during his time on earth. As an example, Jesus suffered Grief, Hallelujah. We know this, uh, and there are at least three examples in the Bible where Jesus openly cries out, Hallelujah. And in, in John eleven thirty five, which simply reads, Jesus wept, Hallelujah. Jesus was troubled. He was touched by the tears of Mary and Martha at the loss of Lazarus. And, and even though Jesus understood, saints, that he would raise Lazarus from the dead, he, he was still quietly troubled to see the pain and the agony that was going on around him. And then in Luke, hallelujah, 19 and 41, which says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Hallelujah. Jesus and this example was crying over mankind he, and, and the state of his father's kingdom in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Jesus openly shows his sorrow and regret and, and his compassion. Hallelujah. For his father's people and, and, and the misery that man was facing on earth. Oftentimes we are facing, hallelujah, this misery because of our own disobedience to God's word. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, 
we are our, our, our own worst enemy. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, we cause a lot of the pain that we that we have to endure in life. Hallelujah. Then in Hebrews 5, uh, 7 and 8, which tells us who in the day of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save them from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son Yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Hallelujah. In this example, since Jesus was crying out, hallelujah, to his own father at the misery in his own walk and with his own destiny. And we saw Jesus struggle further as a man, hallelujah, with his own walk and in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26. 36 and 39, which says, Then come of Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Verse 37, it says, And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38 says, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch over me. And he went a little farther, and he fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Watch this. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Hallelujah. Be done, my Lord. That, that, that just shows us that Jesus, Jesus had the ability to feel real human emotion, pain, and sorrow. And like us, sometimes he had a yearning or a need for human consolation in his times of trouble. Hallelujah. The Bible also records that Jesus also experienced other human emotions such as hunger, temptation, and of course, physical pain. My God, and even though he was the Son of God, the, the Prince of Peace, even though the grace of God was upon him, hallelujah to your name, Jesus, he also had his limitations as a man. And, and so scripture, uh, through scripture, hallelujah, we can see how Jesus could thirst as a man. Hallelujah. And I, and I know, I know this may seem overly simplistic in, in its concept. And, and I know, saints, uh, uh, the temptation is there to take these words and to uh, interpret them into some overly spiritualized manner. But, 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 but let's not get too religious here. Saints, I, I know that, that we like to show others that we are these deep, deep theological thinkers who are able to discern and rightly divide the word of the truth. But the fact is, Jesus was in a vulnerable state as a man on the cross, and he was in need of human kindness, and he did indeed thirst. Hallelujah. When, when Jesus said, I thirst from the cross. This was because he wanted his, his lips and his tongue and his throat moistened in order to utter one final victorious shout before death. This would be, saints, a humble shout of victory and perseverance that would be heard around the world for generations to come. A, a shout that would change mankind forever. My God, once complete the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ would, would, would complete his work of redemption, atonement, reconciliation for the past, present, future sins of the world. And as, 
as well as confirm, hallelujah, uh, God's prophecy that his son would have to be a living sacrifice for the world. Amen, amen. So, 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 what, what, I, what I want you to understand, saints, is, and, 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 and picture this, hallelujah, Jesus, a perfect man without spot or wrinkle, was, was suffering in painful agony and, and darkness while covered in our guilt and shame solely to purchase our sins, to purchase our redemption. And when completed, nothing more would be needed. Hallelujah. Everything Jesus had come to do on earth would be complete. Amen. 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 Somebody, somebody today ought to, ought, to, ought to thank Jesus. Hallelujah. For the blood that was shed. Hallelujah. I, I, I realized Jesus shed his blood for my mess. Hallelujah. He shed his blood for your mess and for your mess. Hallelujah. Jesus shed his blood. Hallelujah. For the sins of the world. Hallelujah. And, and now we are free from the snare of certain death because of our sinful nature. Jesus wept and he paid the price with his life. Hallelujah. For our sins. Hallelujah. And then then I, as, I, as, I, as I thought about this, I, I, I realized that Pastor Curtis pointed out earlier in the series when, when Jesus was on the cross in Luke 23 and 39, and, and, and this was when one of the malefactors or, uh, or which were hanged uh, uh, beside him saying, Hallelujah, if, if thou be Christ, Save thyself and us. Hallelujah. And, and if you remember, Jesus did not answer that person. Hallelujah. And, 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 and Pastor pointed out that it wasn't that Jesus didn't hear this. Hallelujah. But he, he understood that he only had so much that was left inside of him. Hallelujah. He only had so many more breaths to take. Hallelujah. So why bother answering this question? Hallelujah. Uh, 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 and some of us today, hallelujah, we need to start ignoring the malefactors, hallelujah, in our own lives. Hallelujah. That's, that's not a part of the message. I just thought I'd throw that in for free. Hallelujah. Some of us today are wasting our breaths, are wasting our time, hallelujah, on folks. It's not worth wasting your time on. As Pastor Burns pointed out earlier, some of us don't have the ability, hallelujah, to change folks only through prayer. Hallelujah. I'm glad that she said that this morning, hallelujah, because that's an important thing to keep in mind, hallelujah. We try and change some of the folks around us, hallelujah, but we don't have the ability, hallelujah, because some folks are wired differently. There's nothing wrong with that, hallelujah. We are who and what we are, hallelujah, but we don't have the ability to change some of the folks in our lives. Amen. 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 And so, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, also fulfilled scripture from the cross. Hallelujah. There are at least 15 Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled during the last 24 hours surrounding Jesus' death. Hallelujah. But for the sake of time, we're just going to look at three of them. Hallelujah. First, there were several and the 22nd Psalm, but let's look at Psalm 22, 17 and 8, which tells us, I can count all my bones. People stare and they blow over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Hallelujah. This can be made or fulfilled in John 19, 23, which says, when the soldiers crucified Jesus. They took his clothes, dividing them 
into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. Hallelujah. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Hallelujah. Then the second prophecy, hallelujah, is Isaiah 53 and 3, which says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. That was fulfilled, hallelujah, in John 1, 10 and 11, which says, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. However, though, in this account, the Apostle John links the statement of I thirst to that verse in Psalm 69, 21 that we read, which says, they gave me also gall from my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Hallelujah. And then lastly we see the people's response to Jesus cry for help. In verse 29 which says, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop, and they put it to his mouth, my Lord. And, and let me just say, vinegar in this context is essentially a cheap Roman wine that's bitter, and 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 the way that it's made, it's almost like a drug. Hallelujah. So it was it was common in this day because I I, I want you all to understand that. One crucifixion was real. I've heard some people say that it's not. It, it was. And, and crucifixion was a very painful experience. You, you, you think that a hot wheel track or, or an extension cord or a switch was life altering? Hallelujah. When, when we talk about Jesus being crucified, it was common for Roman soldiers to give this to the condemned so that they may easily or more easily numb the pain in order to, to bear their cross. And in the, in the scripture, Matthew, uh, Matthew notes that Jesus initially refused this wine so that he could go through the suffering with a clear mind. Amen. But, 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 but what I want you to understand is, is that Jesus was in great agony and pain, hallelujah, and, 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 and he was suffering as a man in this time, hallelujah, and, 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 and no one cared, hallelujah. And, and so despite Jesus praying for those who mocked and who persecuted him, those at his feet did not help. And so Jesus needed to utter these final words in order to fulfill his truth, his father's truth, and to fulfill his work. And then we see in verse 30 where Jesus has no choice but to accept the bitter wine that was placed before him. Now, let me just add this real quickly. We see that it was given to him on his side. Everything in the Bible is for a reason. Even the smallest of details, places, names, all of these have meaning. And so, his side would have had meaning because just before this, it would have been the celebration for the week of Passover. Amen. And during Passover, it was the Jews that were told to use this hyssop, hallelujah, to put the blood over their doors to avoid the death angel. So this using hyssop would have been representative of Jews. It would have meant something to the Jewish people that were there. 
and should have triggered something in them to see that this hyssop was used. But, but anyway, hallelujah, back to the message. Even though, hallelujah, hallelujah, even though the world let him down and mocked him and turned his back, turned their backs on him, hallelujah, and deeper still, as I was studying for this and studying for Sunday school this morning, one of the things that that kind of touched my heart is not only did, did the people at this time turn their backs on Jesus, but some of us have turned our backs on, on Jesus. Truth be told, sometimes it's hard, but we have to take an honest look at ourselves. Hallelujah. We have to take an honest look at ourselves and our own walks. And the truth is, I can only speak for me, I've turned my back on Jesus sometimes. Jesus endured all that he did for us. And even though he's done all of this, do we really appreciate what he's done for us? Amen. Amen, amen. But, 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 hallelujah. First, what I want you to know is this. Despite ourselves, Jesus loves you. Amen? Jesus loves you. He endured all of this. I, I believe that we have to make the Bible personal sometimes. It says we, we are not making any changes. But Jesus endured the cross for Kevin, for me. He endured the cross with you in mind. That's perspective that I want us to always remember because I think Jesus, Jesus is like that favorite aunt sometimes. We just take them for granted until he's gone, until they're not there. Amen? But, but, but we see in this in this series we see that the world offers a lot of illusions there's an illusion of freedom and illusion of love and lots of synthetic good feelings but in the words of that great negro poet marvin Gaye, ain't nothing like the real thing hallelujah and jesus is the true and one and only real Savior of this world. Amen. 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 And, and, and let me just say this. As I was praying and writing this message last week, I got a call from my older sister, Karen. And, 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 and I'm always glad to hear from my siblings. But she called to tell me that our mother was very ill. She was in the hospital. She had fallen a couple of times over the weekend. And and, and, and she, she, she told me that the doctors checked and medically there was really nothing else wrong with her. But physically her body was just weak. And, and she's endured some health issues the last couple of years and it's just taken a toll on her. And so as I was writing this message, I almost didn't want to take the call because I just wanted to focus on this, hallelujah. But everything happens for a reason, hallelujah. And so what she was calling to tell me was that likely our mother would need 24-hour care for the rest of her life. And, and we all have jobs and responsibility, and so we can't take her into our respective homes, which means that she may have to spend her days in a nursing home. And, and, and she did not want this. You know, my mother's lived in the same senior building. She's 83. She's lived in the same senior building for 20 years, and she leads the bingo game, and she's got friends there. Her sister lives there. Sister-in-law lives there, and she's just comfortable. And and, and, and she, she likes that. And, and, and anyone would, but I say that to say that 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 it, it hurt because 
there was nothing that we could do. We, we didn't want her to be in a nursing home, but there was nothing that, but we didn't have any other choice. And I say that to say this, God is awesome. And, and, and at that point when I got that call, I was writing the message and I was struggling to find a good life lesson. And a good closing because I feel like as ministers of the gospel, it is our responsibility not only to provide historical context and information about the scripture, but it's also our responsibility to help us to, to find practical ways that we can apply the word of God in our lives today because we have to live today. And so when we hear the word, there should be something said that can help us not only grow closer to Jesus, but to grow closer to our own loved ones and to improve our own quality of life. Because the truth is, life is hard. Amen. And, and as I've grown older, um, I, I've come to the conclusion, saints, that uh, one, I miss my youth. Uh, and I miss the, 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 the just, when, when you haven't experienced life, it's easier. And, and, but when we experience life, and, 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 when, and when the pain of life starts to pile up over time, and when we don't let Jesus help to remove that pain, hallelujah, life can be difficult. And so, and so, um, As I began to pray, this was the life lesson in the closing that God gave me for today. Sometimes like Jesus on the cross, when we are at our lowest points, when we're hurting and crying out for relief, the world will give us bitter wine in response to our cries. And like Jesus, Sometimes in our darkest moments of life, in his infinite wisdom, God leaves us no choice but to make do with what we have in the moment of our need in order to fulfill our destiny, in order to fulfill our plan and our purpose for life. However, if we learn how to lean on God's mercy and grace and in the power of prayer and God's word as shown from the cross hallelujah when we when we need to make up for that which the world did not give that we were looking for from the world hallelujah that is when hallelujah we can secure the victory and overcome the world just as Jesus did from the cross. And, and, and here, we need to accept that in life, we will undoubtedly have our own crosses to bear. But, however, God's word has the power to overcome the systems and the failures of this world. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then this, Paul further said in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, not that I speak in regards to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Let me say that again. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer needs. But I can do all things 
through Christ who strengthens me, my God. We will never ever have to endure the same level of pain and sorrow that Jesus endured for us on the cross. Hallelujah. The life is hard, as I said. And 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 what I'll say is this. Learning how to be content in whatever situation God places you in, understanding that his grace is sufficient to see you through. We look to the world for strength. But what does what does Philippians 4 and 13 end with through Christ who strengthens? me. One of the things that I've learned, Saints, is that it's so critically important that we listen to the voice of God and not the voices. Life will always have voices in the background. The key is, Saints, learning how to discern and to decipher the voice of God and the voice of those he sends to offer us the consolation that we need in times of trial versus the voices of the enemy that comes to distract us and help us to forget that Jesus is the source of everything that we have. And if Jesus is the source of everything that we have, hallelujah, we don't have to worry about anything. And, and so when we have those moments when life just seems too difficult to bear, but we have a thirst, hallelujah, and the world gives us vinegar, hallelujah, if we can lean on the Lord, hallelujah, if we can lean on the Lord, he'll turn that vinegar, that, that, that sour vinegar into sweet vinegar, hallelujah, I, I don't know what life has in store for us. I don't know what the future holds. And sometimes life is difficult, saints. But one of the things that I've learned is that God has a way sometimes of putting our backs against the wall, leaving us nowhere to go, nowhere to run, just so he can show us how awesome he truly is. Someone told me once, Christianity is nothing more than one beggar telling another beggar where they found the bread. Where I found the bread is in the word of God. Hallelujah. What sustains me is his word. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit. Saints today understand that although life is difficult, hallelujah, if we can learn to lean on the Lord, hallelujah, I, I, I am confident of this, saints, if we can hold on tight to our faith through the grace of God, somehow, some way, we're going to make it. It may not seem like it sometimes, hallelujah, you may have to endure some nights with tears in your eyes but somehow some way we're going to make it if you can put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee hallelujah we're going to make it hallelujah know that hallelujah God loves you and the beauty is there's absolutely nothing May God bless and keep each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Powerful word. The world gives us vinegar, bitter wine to drink. But oh, my Lord, my God. Turn that bitterness, that bitter wine, into sweet victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, um, 
as I was thinking about our brother's message and, and how we've been in this series of Jesus being on the cross. See, he had to go there because the consequence of sin is death. And God wanted to save us. He knew we couldn't do it on our own. So Jesus suffered the death for us. See, before he died on the cross, one time he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But what it is, is Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. And at that moment, there was a separation of God from the man that was in him. And, and, and that separation was proof, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ was both a deity and he was both man. And in that separation, what God did was he, he did a reversal of his judgment against us. He put it on Jesus Christ instead of putting it on us. And all we got to do is accept the free gift. See, when you believe that Jesus died for your sin, when you see, then you will receive that peace, that shalom you're looking for in the world. You know how you, you look for that shalom in the bar. You look for that shalom when you shoot shooting the pool. You look for that shalom when you shoot the breeze with your friends, but you don't get that peace. You can only get that true peace when you accept what Jesus Christ has done for you. You know, I, 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 I know, I know this for a fact that that when you accept the gift, when you receive the free gift, all you got to do is accept it. Receive it, possess it, because Jesus already paid the price for you. So if you don't know him, this is a good day to get to know who Jesus Christ is in your life. Because what he did was, when you accept him, he becomes that shocking sword. When the world wants to turn you up, move you around and shock you with this and that and the other, Jesus takes the shock. Because see, now you got some word in you. And you know how to handle it. So if you don't know Jesus, today is a good day to get to know. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Accept the gift that God wants to give to you this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, there's only one way for a person to get into the kingdom of God. And that one way is Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is completely free. He is totally accessible to each and every one of us. It's not based on what grandmama did or what mama did. It's what you need for your own life. Hallelujah. So whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, whether you are a Hindu or a Buddhist, whether you are a Rastafarian or a Muslim, secular, agnostic, atheist, or pagan, it doesn't matter. You still have to make that decision for yourself. Hallelujah. To answer God's call of reconciliation for your life. Because Jesus is alive and he is alive. You got to believe and receive Jesus Christ as your own Savior for your life. So if, you, if that's not you, open up your heart and receive Jesus Christ today. Because now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, just bow your head and repeat this prayer. Whether you in media or right here in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you to come forward because sometimes people don't want to come forward. But just say this prayer. 
up the time so that we can eat together. Hold it up in your hand. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Amen. Thank you.